Hello everybody, it's Michelle here with Angel Souls and this is our weekly angelic message for the week beginning February 26th, 2024. Before we dive in to this reading, which has been really good, if you haven't noticed, I have brought back the dailies. Those are some excellent cards coming out. Make sure you're tuning in for those. And I'm doing monthlies, y'all. Okay, I, I, I'm doing it. I'm doing it because you want them. I'm doing it. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> right. But before we get into even all of that, I have partnered up with Mint Mobile. Yes, Mint Mobile that is owned by Ryan Reynolds. And I want to let you know that this is a chance for us to save a little bit of money on at least one of our bills. We talk about that all the time in these videos. I do readings for people. I hear about what they're going through out there. I can't switch everything for you, obviously, or do anything about the rent. But here's a phone service <laughs> that's really good. I've used it. I've really enjoyed it. That could save you a little bit of money. So the plan started at $15 a month. If you use my unique code, you are helping me out and the work that I do here. And if you choose to do that, I appreciate that so, so, so much. It only takes like 15 minutes to switch over. It is the largest 5G network in the nation. Why wouldn't you at least try it? So give it a go. See how you like it. If you can shave off a little money, like I said, a little bit off of the monthly expenses, let's do it. Okay, <laughs> so thank you for that. If again, you choose to use my unique link. Now, getting back into the reading here let's see i want everyone don't listen to this while you're driving or if you are driving don't just pay attention to your driving okay like let's not get crazy <laughs> all right so i'm gonna breathe in i'm gonna close my eyes again if you were driving or operating heavy machinery taking care of children maybe not the moment okay don't do that thank you let's see <laughs> let's see what we got going on here What is the story? What do we need to know? All right. Four of Gabriel, we'll talk about it. The Chariot, we'll talk about it. <laughs> King of Ariel, okay, nice, nice energy here. Let me just put this down here for a second. Ten of Michael, okay. There is a huge ending coming because there's something... Like the, the stuff that you have been wanting to put to rest, most of this feels like it is emotional, but it's putting some emotional situation to rest and then things start carrying forward for you. Eight of Ariel, Ariel you might be starting something brand new that you have to learn. Okay, so let's start four of Gabriel here. Every time this card comes out, this reminds me of stability. In this particular depiction, there is a couple here being watched over by an angel. And it just makes me think of like, you know, again, partnership. We talk about that in the daily, so make sure you check that out. Partnership, um, being supported. Finally having a firm enough foundation where you can start forward movement. So if you've been feeling stuck, a lot of potential here this week for you to get unstuck. We'll talk more about that, of course, because of the chariot, the big story around the chariot, okay? Time to celebrate. Abundant rewards for hard work. Release yourself from burdensome situations. And then for that, we just have to go right to the 10 of Michael, <laughs> right? That is the burdensome situation. The 10 of Michael card says, a situation has ended and you are finally free. New opportunities for happiness will now follow. Put the past behind you. I want to say something here about, I, I see on social media where people are getting laid off from their jobs or, you know, just getting fired. Um, job hunting has been a big thing. Uh, you know, when I do readings for people, it's always like, you know, I've been out there for a very long time the social media stuff that I do when people are getting laid off, they're not getting my services. So I was out there too. I do copywriting. I do writing pretty much of all kinds. Uh, and I've done executive assistant work where I've managed an office. Like I was out there too, trying to find extra work just to, you know, just to get by. Most people need two jobs to get by. And I have seen firsthand how rough it is 
out there. Companies putting out fake, you know, job things and then making you go through the interviews and they were never intending to hire anybody in the first place. So whatever that energy is, if some of you are dealing with that, please know that is coming to an end. And I will also tell you that um, I don't know how it's going to happen, but companies that are being unscrupulous about the hiring process, something's going to happen there where they are going to be held accountable. Again, I don't know how that looks. Obviously, I don't know the laws or whatever, but something's going to be put in place where they are not allowed to do that. So I don't know if it's another uh, safeguard where they have to prove that they have the job available, whatever the case may be. Um, I know there's, I forget what the list is called, but there is uh, something out there that if a company is going to be doing mass layoffs, they have to post it on this, uh, in this place, on this site. Comment down below if you know that. I don't know what it's called off the top of my head, but it could be something along those lines. Like you need to prove that this is actually something, okay? And some of these job platforms, we won't call anybody out here, but some of them are allowing scammers to come in. They will also be held accountable. So if you're one of the people watching this and you're like, finances have been really tough. I don't, I didn't know what I was gonna do. If, if you did get let go from a job, Okay, like let's say something like that was occurring or this could be the ending of a relationship as well because this kind of has this emotional tie to it. Something that's come to an end, you are hanging on out of fear, right? So if it's a job, you're afraid you're not going to pay your bills. If it's a love partnership, maybe you're afraid of being alone. You've been hanging on to something for the wrong reason. So when people hear, oh my gosh, the ending, oh boy. (laughs) <laughs> like this is not anything to fear. And even if it's unpleasant for a couple of minutes, you'll be fine because this isn't the whole story, right? We got this four of Gabriel, which again is a lot of, uh, a lot of support, a lot of stability and being able to create that stability for yourself, which then gets you into the chariot energy. Okay. So on here we have the number seven. When we see seven in angel numbers, that's an archangelic energy coming forward. So if you've ever seen, Uh, repeating sevens that is you're on your path you know archangels are trying to help you they want to guide you if you don't know about angel numbers I did a video forever ago okay forever ago (laughs) I believe it's called um, angel signs repeating numbers it's right on the front page of my uh, YouTube channel so make sure you go over there and give it a watch you can refer back to it again it's old some of you may know the funny story around recording that I recorded that video as an afterthought. I just lost my earring. Funsies. Okay, um, whatever earring. You can just sit there and think about what you've done. So I recorded this, uh, that video, the repeating numbers video. After a, a very long day, I had gone off to the pool. Yes, I was living in a place. I had a pool at the time. Hottest day of the year. And I came back, showered, put myself together, filmed the weekly. And I was like, oh, yeah, people were asking about angel numbers. So I just put this little thing together. I don't even think I had my lamps on. I don't even think I had my lights on. I was on like a GoPro. It, <laughs> go back and watch it just for kicks, okay? Like, let's take this one out too since we're uneven now. Um, but yeah, if you go back, of course, that is the video that I, I haven't checked recently. Well, last I checked, I had like, I think 800,000 views or something. Yeah, that would be the one where I look ridiculous. The quality wasn't even that great, but like, what you going to do? Maybe there's something in that for this week too. It's the thing that you don't think is going to be successful that takes off. Okay. Yeah. So buckle up, honey. All right. Now we have the chariot, the number seven archangels are helping you, bringing you forward. It's also about ascension. People cringe at that word. I don't know what to tell y'all. We, this is the language we use for things that are unexplainable. Okay. So it's lifting, expanding your awareness, your consciousness, however you want to see it. The second of Metatron, also about ascension. He's about intuition, studying, which uh, I can get the card picked up, which we have the eight of Ariel here as well. So Metatron can help with studying, remembering information, uh, you know, sacred geometry, so many things. The book of life, Akashic records. Uh, did I say time management? If I didn't, there you go. Throw that one in there too. Helps with a lot of things, especially resonates with the third eye. Determination and self-control. This is how you're going to be able to make this stuff happen. Determination and self-control, okay? 
career advancement, boom, boom, I done told you that that one job was terrible anyway. No, okay. <laughs> Some of you might be like, no, it was good. It wasn't good because they fired you, okay? That's mean. Let that help you move on, all right? Acknowledgement of success by others. But this is you getting into your balanced, harmonious state, recapturing who you really are and carrying forward with that energy. It's absolutely beautiful. Now, let's get into these aerial cards. So if you don't know about Archangel Ariel, Ariel is associated with a lot of things, again, like Metatron, but like nature, being grounded, detoxification, uh, material needs. I always associate Ariel with sort of root chakra things, right? So helping us connect into our physical being and still be a spiritual self at the same time. So not losing the spiritual self in your physical beingness. And she helps us manifest. Now, what's interesting here is we have the King of Ariel, successful. See these words popping around? Successful, successful, successful. If you get to the end of the week and you're not successful, do you know why? Because you were avoiding taking the final bow on an old situation. Now this could also be needing to change how you think. If you want a reading with me to get some help on that, go to angelsouls444.com. Those are my standard readings. Here and there I can take a live reading one-on-one, -on -one, me and you on Zoom. I am pulling back on those a little bit. As you guys know, if you've watched me for any amount of time, I'll come out for several months at a time. I'll do live readings and live courses. And then if it starts getting out of hand again where people don't let the reading end when it needs to end, whatever, then I take a break. Okay, <laughs> we got to step back. So if you want a live session, I'm still fitting those in here and there and you can respect the time limit. Cool, cool. All right, so if, you, if you're if you okay with all of that, email me. Don't go to my website and get a standard reading and say, okay, contact me to schedule. You're getting a standard reading, which is you fill out the form, I make the recording, I send it to you, that's how you get your service, okay? The Zoom, if you're gonna get a Zoom link, that's a different price point for live readings and live teaching courses. I teach how to read Oracle cards. I teach how to, well, specifically angel cards, I guess. Um, angel Oracle cards, I teach angel mediumship. And I also have a course on how to connect with your angels. If you're interested in any of those, email, email at angelsouls444 at gmail.com. Cool, cool. All right, back to what we were doing. So successful, okay, we got this going. Stable, stable, four of Gabriel. Okay, so you're getting a lot of like doubled up messages here. Let's make sure we're paying attention to this. Accomplished. Acknowledgement of success by others, okay? And powerful, powerful. Your plans are working out very well, professional and financial success, using resources wisely. So don't be a fool with this. Don't be a fool because whatever this is, it feels like there's a newness to it because we got Metatron in here. You're stepping up, you're challenging yourself, you're expanding. And then we have the eight of Ariel. And this says, take an eight is a number of abundance, by the way. Of course it is. Uh, cause we've heard this before, right? <laughs> Take great pride in your excellent work. Practice makes perfect. Consider getting additional education or training. This feels very much, you know, part of what you're ending might be, I'm no longer going to hold myself back because I don't know something. This I can speak to. I got this big honked ring and it keeps banging on the table. That's what's going on off camera. Okay. Why did I just do that again? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Anyway, what, you know, one of the things that I, I've kind of lived by is like, I'll go into things and I'm always kind of shy. Well, not, not anymore. Back in the day when I was younger, I would say, oh, I can't do that. Oh, I'm not, I would always think of myself as not smart enough to do it. But then I realized nobody knows anything or they're, they're not doing something that I couldn't do if I had that same amount of time to do it or to learn it. Do you see what I'm saying? Like they know that because they have, that was such a jumbled way of putting that. They know how to do something, maybe because of talent, but mostly because they trained and they practice. Okay, someone might have like an eight singing talent, but you still have to develop your voice. You still have to practice, right? And so what I would do, 
And I did this a long time ago. Now we all laugh about the degrees I have. I have a degree in theater. Stop it. Okay, leave me alone. I have a degree in theater, acting and directing from the Ohio State University. Leave your comments down below. Uh, and then I went to, I have an MFA in creative writing from New School University in New York City. You'll know that the Actors Studio used to be there. Uh, Parsons School of Design. I don't know what's going on there now, but I believe Parsons School of Design was there. Dance. The dance school is really famous. It was in, that was the school that the character from Pose was supposed to be going to. Yeah, so it, it's that, right? So you would think that you could come out and be like, let's go. Like, let's do this, right? <laughs> no, you still have to practice this stuff. Now, the reason why I did the theater, and hang with me here. I'm going somewhere with this. this is the reason why I'm giving you this example. The theater degree started out as an English degree. I was going to be an English teacher, Okay. And then I, I got to put these cards down, lean in. You could skip ahead of the story, but I got to tell you this because I'm telling you, the English department, oh my God, I went to like the first class and there were these like moody emo, uh, like, I don't know, like, forgive me for saying this, but in this case, these kids that were like moping around the hallways that were painted this putrid pea green, they're just like, everyone's just so mopey. And like emotionally self-indulgent. Now that is not the same thing as I'm going through a hard time. I need help. That's different. Okay. This was I'm in love with feeling moody. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't, oh, I, I can't. And and that's what I said back then. I said, I can't. I can't be around. This is freaking depressing. Okay. And I don't feel inspired by this. Now I was terrified of public speaking. Terrified of getting up in front of people. And I took a theater 101 class, which had nothing to do with acting, not really. It was studying the art of theater and the history of theater. And I fell in love. It was my favorite class. And I said, I'm going to do this. Now, I knew. And if you've studied acting, you know how dumb this gets. Okay. You have to like do courses where, well, first of all, at Ohio State, we had to do everything. So you had to do like set design. You had to get on the set and like build things. That's how I learned to use a drill. Um how to strike a set, you got to get into the costume department, you got to do a lot of stuff. My least favorite part was having to take the class, I forget what it was called, <laughs> improv, well, it's not called improv, that's not the one, improv was another one I didn't like, but there was a class where you had to come in and act like animals, and then you were in with all these people who were really into it. Maybe I wasn't mature enough to sit back and watch this and not laugh. I couldn't do it. I graduated. Okay. And I got it. But the point is, is that I was terrified of doing these things. I was terrified of being on the stage. So I went and studied theater. My first audition in front of, you know, this, because they have, they had like a pretty, you know, amazing staff there. And I had to audition for um, a play and I bombed this audition. I went in, they're like, hey, you look kind of Irish. Can you do an Irish accent? And I couldn't. I, I hadn't taken that class yet. <laughs> I hadn't gotten there yet. And they said, just try it. And it was embarrassing. Go ahead, Ireland. You can laugh at me. That's fine. Okay. But listen, I, I couldn't do it. So I walk out. I'm completely down. I go down the hallway and there was another show that was supposed to be a graduate show. So it was only supposed to be cast by grad students. And I was an undergrad at the time. And I was so down and this person who was um, signing people up for the audition encouraged me to go on in and just do whatever in the audition. Hang with me. There's a reason why I'm telling you this. Okay. If you get impatient and you can't sit through a story, it's not like I'm blabbing here. There's a reason behind it. So hang with me. You got to examine that. Okay. I kept saying, no, 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 no. I can't. I don't uh, It's a grad thing, whatever. And they're like, well, you probably won't get cast because it's a grad uh, performance, but just try it. So I go in and I didn't care because it was a grad thing and I'm an undergrad. I'm not going to get cast anyway. I went in, I just had a monologue that I wasn't even the monologue I used for the last audition. I just pulled this monologue out, didn't care, did it. I got cast as the lead. It was the Baltimore Waltz and I shouldn't have been cast, but I, I got cast as the lead. 
And once I got out there, I was thrust into <laughs> center stage. You better work real quick to get over your fears. You've got a show to do. That was the best thing I could have ever done studying theater. I didn't know it, so I learned it. So I'm no longer intimidated by it. And bless that person who got me to go into that audition. Because when I came a few days later, there was this like area like where all the kids were. It was like in a basement area where we did our <laughs> did our classes and stuff. Yeah, we were the kids in the basement for sure. Um, I remember this guy who I really looked up to. He was so fascinating. Such a great, great actor. He's still an actor to this day. Good for him. But I was so intimidated by him. And he walked up and he was so sweet. He leaned down and said, congratulations. And I didn't know what he was talking about. And he said, go over and check the list. Now, as I walked up to that list, all these grad student women were ticked. Okay, they were ticked. They were, I gave me the eyeballs up and down like, mm, who's she? Uh, and there was my name. Michelle with two L's, Patterson with two T's. As I think the character's name is Anna. And uh, yeah, so that was huge breakthrough territory for me. And it made it so I, one, was not afraid to audition again. As a matter of fact, I was invited to audition because I I landed a lead role. So I'd been invited to um, audition for these other shows. But I also wasn't afraid to fail. I wasn't afraid to go in there and make a complete <laughs> A out of myself, right? Because I had done it once and it was unpleasant, but I survived. I had failed once, but it led to something even better. You know, instead of being the, you know, the woman who brings in the tea and has an Irish accent as she says one line, I got the lead. That's your week this week. You feel me? New York City, terrified. You freaking kidding me? I come from a small town in Ohio, New York. Now, I had lived in Los Angeles prior to that, but I had, I moved out there by myself, but I met some friends out there. But I, I didn't know anybody in New York. Same kind of thing. I was terrified of New York City. And so I went. That's what we're talking about here. Forgive the forever long story, but I hope that that, I hope that that helps, okay? I hope by taking a moment to get into the weeds of a story, which most of our brains aren't capable of, you know, handling, listening to these days, that you can understand the energy of this week. Get over that fear. And, oh, and weirdly, oh, this is a ballerina. How weird. She's on a stage and I was giving the example of being in theater. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, the arts, okay? So the king of Ariel might be someone who casts you. They're the ones that cast but maybe you need to learn your lines. I swear to God, if you guys take that literally, I don't know what to tell you, but this says, did I say this? Oh yeah, oh, we already read this one. But the Eight of Ariel, this is the week of huge breakthroughs where you're no longer allowing yourself to be intimidated. And yeah, if you fall on your face, oh, it's gonna be embarrassing, but it could lead to a huge win. The win comes from letting something go and being willing to put the work in. If you do that, this could be leading to something big. Of course, my camera cut off right as I was saying goodbye. But anyway, angelsouls444.com if you want to get a personal reading with me. And we're just going to leave it there. I'm sending you guys so much love and take care.